This rather uh, corpulent man has a magical cloak on him. Unfortunately, Safana has oh, a, feel so approximately special. no pickpocketing pickpocketing skill, but we'll still try it. Yes, and if it thought. fails, which it will almost certainly do, yes, then we the will have to pleasure. kill him. Well, that failed. What? Mine is the fist of Sorry, Algernon. Thanks for the cloak. If he had just been a little less careful, he would have just lost the cloak and not his life. And this gives plus two to Charisma. We'll give it to Safana so that she has, so that she uh, gains 19. I'll do anything. Which is quite godly. And with that, uh, she makes a very nice party diplomat. Of course, we lost uh, four reputation in the process. Which brings us to a slightly worrying dislike reputation of 6. And if you go down a certain threshold, which is like 3, you get attacked on sight by guards everywhere. Uh -huh. yes, if you wish. So this is something you have to be careful. And this is why we have not been killing innocents on, well, uh. randomly everywhere we have been. And your reputation goes down regardless of... Uh, whether there's, there's anyone to actually witness the act, even if you do that in a perfectly isolated place, your reputation will still go down by the same amount. So it's a very unforgiving system. Oh, yes, dear. We come in this house to pick uh, this book up, The History of the Fateful Coin, which I will read. Old tales tell that luck plays a crucial role in each person's life. When each newborn baby enters into the realms, Timora flips a coin from from the form. Bleh. Timora flips a coin form from the remnants of the original goddess of luck, Tyke. Beshaba calls it in the air, the moon, heads, or the cloak, tails. If Beshaba is right, that person is cursed with misfortune for the rest of his or her days. If she's wrong, Lady Luck smiles on that child for the rest of his or her life. For some rare beings, the coin lands edge on, and these luckless few can forge their own fates, for they have more freedom over their destinies than the power themselves. The powers themselves. I really hope that these are only old tales and not reality, because uh, yes, otherwise, otherwise life sucks. What? What are you if really revolves around the coin toss. It's so hard to find decent folk nowadays. Yes, this is an old acquaintance, Firebed Elven Hair, which we met in Kennel Keep. What he's doing here, I don't know. Ah, oh, you're old Gorion's war, the lonely kid of Kennel Keep. Of course. I heard about the loss of Gorion, and I must give you my deepest condolence condolences. I hope since you've left Candle Keep, you've kept on on your reading. Oh, the world of books. I have heard that a new copy of that wondrous tome, The History of the Fateful Coin, can be had for the pretty, pre 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 pretty penny in one of the stores around here. If you would be so kind as to buy it for an old man like myself, I'd gladly reimburse you. I'd even give you a little bonus to help in your travels. It must be so hard with Gorion gone. Firebed Elven Hare is aware of Gorion's death already. Which is interesting. And he wants the history of the fateful coin, which by total accident <clears throat> we just wish. picked up. It's a hard to find decent folk now. Ah, uh, you are generous to an old man, so I will be gen generous in turn. Let me give you another book in exchange. It is a touch darker than what you have given me, but I get a sense that you might enjoy it. Nonetheless, mm, I keep very pleasant company. And with that, our reputation increases by one, which brings it back to seven. Uh huh. I'll I'll do anything. We will thoroughly raid Firebed Elven Hare's house because he doesn't mind. If that's your desire. And yes, there is a sleeping woman upstairs. Don't ask me what she's doing there. Well, maybe Firebed Elven Hair is simply married. I don't know. With pleasure. Yes. 
parkour to Zan, huh? I'm a fine looking strumpet, ain't I? I love a fighter in full plate. They just look so hard. <laughs> awesome. Are you interested in some thrills? I generally avoid temptation unless I can't resist it. There is unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, no way to interact more than that with the curtains in this game. This is not The Witcher. Although I'm not even sure if uh, in The Witcher you can really interact more with Cortensons, I don't remember. Haven't played that far in it. Any anyway, we're talking about Baldur's Gate, not The Witcher here. I will actually read the history of the Dead Three, which is the book Firebed Elven Hair has given us, because um, although it is quite a long read, it is important to know. Uh, in order to make sense out of the events in this game, it provides background to, well, what forms one of the critical parts of the plot. So when it, it's an important uh, element of the, the background, if you want. So that's why I will read it. Knucklebones, Skull Bowling, and the Empty Throne. In ages past there was but one god of strife, death, and the dead, and he was known as Jurgal, lord of the end of everything. Jurgal fomented and fed on the discord among mortals and powers alike. When beings slew each other in their quest for power, or in their hatred, he welcomed them into his shadowy kingdom of eternal gloom. As all things died, everything came to him eventually, and over time he built his power into a kingdom unchallenged by any other god. Eventually, however, he grew tired of his duties, for he knew them too well. Without challenge there is nothing, and in, and in nothingness there is only gloom. In such a state, the difference between absolute power and absolute powerlessness is undetectable. During this dark era, there arose three powerful mortals, Bane, Baal, and Merkel, who lusted after the power Jurgal wielded. The trio forged an unholy pact, agreeing that they would dare to seek such ultimate power or die in the attempt. Over the length and breadth of the realms they strode, seeking powerful magic and spells and defying death at every turn. No matter what monster they confronted or what spells they braved, the three mortals emerged unscathed at every turn. Eventually the trio destroyed one of the seven lost gods, and they each seized a portion of his divine essence for themselves. The trio then journeyed into the Grey Waste and sought out the Castle of Bone. Through armies of skeletons, legions of zombies, hordes of non-corporal non undead, and a gauntlet of liches, they battled. Eventually they reached the object of their lifelong quest, the Bone Throne. I claim this throne of evil, shouted Bane the Tyrant. I'll destroy you before you can raise a finger, threatened Baal the Assassin. And I shall imprison your essence for eternity, promised Merkel the necromancer. Drogal arose from his throne with a, re a weary expression and said, The throne is yours. I have grown weary of this empty power. Take it if you wish. I promise to serve and guide you as your seneschal until you grow comfortable with the position. Before the stunned trio could react, the Lord of the Dead continued, Who among you shall rule? The trio immediately fell to fighting amongst themselves, while Jurgle looked on with indifference. When eventually it appeared that either they would all die of exhaustion, or battle on for an eternity, the Lord of the End of Everything intervened. After all you have sacrificed, would you come away with nothing? Why don't you divide the portfolios of the office and engage in a game of skill for them? asked Jurgle. Bane, Baal, and Merkel considered the gods offered and agreed. Jurgal took the heads of his three most powerful liches and gave them to the trio that they would compete whoops, compete by, a bowling, by bowling the skulls. Each mortal rolled a skull across the grey waste, having agreed that the winner would be he who bowled the farthest. Malar the Beast Lord arrived to visit Jurgal at this moment. After quickly ascertaining that the winner of the contest would get all of Jurgal's power, he chased off after the three skulls to make sure that the contest would be halted until he had a chance to participate for part of the prize. Bane, Ball, and Merkel again fell to fighting, and it was obvious their sport was ruined. And again Jurgal intervened. 
Why don't you allow Lady Luck to decide so that you don't have to share with the beast? The trio agreed, and Jurgle broke off his skeletal finger bones and gave them to the players. When Mala returned from chasing the skulls, he found that the trio had just finished a game of knuckle bones. Bane cried out triumphantly, As winner, I choose to rule for all eternity as the ultimate tyrant. I can induce hatred and strife at my whim, and all will bow down before me while in my kingdom. Merkel, who had, had, who had won second place, declared, but I choose the dead, and by doing so I truly win, because all you are lord over, Bane, will eventually be mine. All things must die, even gods. Baal, who finished third, demurred, I choose death, and it is by my hand that all that you rule, Lord Bane, will eventually pass to Lord Merkel. Both of you must pay honor to me and obey my wishes, since I can destroy your kingdom, Bane, by murdering your subjects, and I can starve your kingdom, Merkel, by staying my hand. Malar growled in frustration, but he could do nothing, and yet again, only the beasts were left for him. And Jurgles merely smiled, for he had been delivered. So this book uh, has described how the trio Bane, Baal, and Merkel rose to power. It does not explain, however, why they would be called the Death Three. That's because after the events chronicle in that book came the time of troubles where all three of these gods were slain. Bane was slain by Torm, Merkel was slain by Midnight, aka Mistra, and Baal was slain by Siric. The aftermath of the time of troubles is, well, what? one of the critical plot elements of Baldur's Gate. I don't want to spoil too much at this point. But uh, we shall unravel some of the, the followings of that story, if you want, the events that happened after, as we uncover the plot. Hmm.